hello everyone and welcome to my new video in this video i'm going to show you how you can deploy machine learning or deep learning models on google cloud platforms app engine so we won't be deploying just one model we will be deploying two different models one for nlp and one for computer vision so in which you will upload a, a file and uh, upload an image file and it will tell you the probability of skin cancer now both these applications we have developed over time so um, you you must go and watch I'm I highly recommend you to go and watch the previous videos uh, where I have uh, dockerized the bird sentiment model that we are going to use today and we have also dockerized and created a flask app for the melanoma classification or skin cancer detection app uh, that we are going to deploy today but you can also watch this video first and then go back there to know more details so this is the bird sentiment classification uh, uh, model that we created and in, uh, in the last video uh, we created the docker file so now let's see how the docker file looks like or we can just look at look at it in our editor so the first step is to uh, create first step is to um, make your docker file run on your local machine and uh, there are a few things that we need uh, before deploying it on app engine so one of the things is app engine is going to listen on port 8080 so when we created our bird sentiment uh, model it was running on port 9999 if i remember correctly so uh how app engine works is uh, you, you can you can have a huge app instead of uh, this small uh, api that we are going to deploy right now uh, so you can have the front end part listen on port 8080 so that users can come to your website and you can deploy some uh, microservices on the same uh, machine on the same server so it's it's going to be a monolith application and your front end will only be able to uh, your front end is going to be the only service that talks to your microservices on the same server but you can also deploy multiple different services and we will come to that a little bit later so for now let's go to our bird sentiment model and fix a few things so one thing that i want to fix is change the device from cura to cpu and we were mounting the model in previous video but we won't be doing that anymore and you can see that i have copied the model here model.bin another thing that you need to change is in your uh, application first you need to load weights on your uh, cpu device so you can use map location and device here device comes from our config.py file another thing that we need to change is change the port to 8080 so once we have done all these changes we can go to our docker file now docker file in our docker file uh, we were using nvidia cuda runtime uh, so instead of using this image, we will just be using Ubuntu 18.04 and everything else remains the same. We have some path variables. We install a bunch of stuff from uh, app repo, uh, but we don't need that, but let's keep it. And uh, we install Miniconda. We create a Conda environment with Python 3.7 and we copy all the content of this folder to a folder called SRC inside the Docker container and we install all the requirements after activating the ml environment so now one more command that you need to learn is expose so what expose does is it exposes a given port to uh, the local machine so here we are exposing port 8080 and command after that that you want to learn is entry point so till now we have been running docker uh, docker containers using docker run and then we specify what commands to run so instead of specifying the commands in docker run we can specify it in entry point so whenever we we do docker run this command will be run so here we do bin bash minus c cdsrc and add uh, source act 
activate ml and then python app dot py so whatever your application is you can just run it in our case it's a python application and now we can go to our terminal and build a docker container so we are in the terminal now and now we run docker build minus f docker file minus t and here comes sentiment dev and then a dot because it's in the same folder the docker file and we wait for some time so while we wait i can show you some more stuff or or maybe just let's just wait for some time and see what happens so now you can see that it's successfully tagged so now what we do is we run run it so we were running it using docker run so we will be using the same command but now we have we minus p 80 80 80 80 and the target is sentiment dev then a dot and this should run it so i think i already have some running docker containers so let me stop those docker containers so i can stop them using docker stop and docker ps minus a minus q inside this dollar sign so you can just do docker stop and the id so let it stop the docker containers and in the meantime we can go to our google cloud console so you need a gcp account obviously and uh, for, for for this project and you create a new project so project name here i have named it youtube and my project id is something so this is important to know or just to note down and i will go to my menu and click on app engine and here i will create an application so create an application then you choose a it tells you to choose a region I will choose Europe West and remember that region is permanent for a given project and we create the app. Now here it is asking us to choose a language in which you want to deploy. So we will just choose other because what I'm going to show you can be used for any kind of application. So other and flexible environment and it does require a billing account. So we go next and now the app is being created it takes a few seconds so how app engine works is you have one default application so this default application you can map to a custom domain name if you want so it can be your website and you can also create multiple applications with names of uh, with different different names so they are called services so you can create different services and your default application can talk to those services so you can have your front end on the default application and you can have backend services uh, as different applications on the app engine uh, but you have to remember that these in order for your default application to talk to these backend services your uh, backend services must be open to the world and then you have to think of some sec kind of security of uh, uh, these backend services so you can use some kind of api secret secret keys all these kind of things or you can use a proxy server to route your traffic from uh, your front end through a proxy server that talks to your uh, service in app engine and you can have a firewall there but if you have a fi firewall that applies to the whole app engine so yeah it's a whole uh, different uh, kind of system so app engine in my opinion is good for monolith applications in which you have front end and back end in the on the same application so if you have a monolith application so you can have your front end talk to port 8080 and you can have different services on the same server and your services won't be accessible from the outside world because you're not exposing their ports so you only your front end will be able to talk to the back end on the same server and it's very important to know this and 
now it's done so let's go back to the dashboard of app engine here it is and uh, it says your app engine application has been created and in the meantime all my docker containers have been stopped so now I can run this again and uh, let's wait for this to finish so it seems like our application is running now so it's just downloading the weights so it has started running on port 8080 and uh, we can we can test it so we can do a simple curl get request so curl get request and uh, so localhost port 8080 predict some sentence so here uh, the model predictions are not good and I, I, I don't really care if they're good or not. The video is not about training the model, it's about deploying the model. So we have already trained it previously and uh, it gave uh, accuracy of 92%, 93%, which was quite good. So, so now our endpoint here is working. So let's go back and stop the Docker container and it won't stop like this. So. Uh, yeah, th this is a problem of my my terminal, but yeah, it will stop for you. And now we go to our next step, which is installing the Google Cloud SDK in Ubuntu. So you can install Google Cloud SDK on uh, any dif different kinds of machines. So I'm using Ubuntu. So you can see I've searched for G Cloud install Ubuntu. And here's a quick quick start guide and uh, it's very simple just three steps to install the google cloud sdk so then you will be able to use the g cloud command from your terminal and that's what we want to use so now the next thing that you want to add in your project is a app.yaml file so app.yaml will tell google app engine uh, about the application and how to deploy it so one of the keys in app.yaml is runtime so you say the runtime is custom so now you saw that like there are many different kinds of runtimes uh, when we selected the app engine so you can select any of them you can have python here if you want uh, we are using custom runtime and environment flex as long as you have a docker file that listens to port 8080 uh, when it's run in the entry point you're all set and you can also specify uh, some kind of uh, scaling so automatic scaling so now all these um, all the information about app.yaml can be found by just googling app.yaml app engine and here you have app.yaml reference uh, which gives you reference for all different kinds of uh, applications python java node.js so uh, instead of using python runtime we are using um, python uh, we are using a custom runtime and let's see what we have okay uh, it went to wikipedia so let's see what we have related to uh, scaling so automatic scaling so here we have the automatic scaling element which can which can have max instances between zero and a huge number uh, some minimum instances so you must note this warning you need warm-up request i'm not going in details of that in this video and uh, you can have maximum number of idle instances um, you can also have target cpu utilization so uh, here it says if the the default is 0 0.6 so if your cpu utilization is more than 60 percent it will launch a new instance so you must specify that so let's do that uh, we will do we will use two of them max instances and target cpu utilization so automatic scaling max target cpu utilization 0 0.9 and max instances uh, four. So we will have at max we will have four instances. And now uh, we can we can also define the resources. So this is also very important. How many CPUs you want to use? 
maybe we want to use two CPUs uh, and then you can define how much RAM you want to use and how much disk size you want so memory underscore GB uh, we want two gigabytes of memory I think that's enough to run our application and disk size in gigabytes that will be 15 let's say it can be 10 10 gigabytes so this is a resource you want to specify and uh, when it scales on its own uh, it will create multiple instances which are of the same size so this is very important that you should remember and now uh, I have already installed G cloud so we can set it up so to set up G cloud so after installing it to set it up you need to run G cloud in it so I'm not going to run it because it shows a lot of information which is not uh, relevant for you and also because I have already set it up so once you run this command it's going to ask for your Google cloud uh, the email associated with your Google cloud account and uh, it's going to ask you to verify it uh, then it's going to ask you what project you want to work on and it's not going to give you project name it's going to give you project ID so when we go to our Google Cloud platform we see the ID is different so once you have done that uh, it's time to deploy your model to app engine and that's the fun and the easiest part so the only command you need to run is G cloud app deploy but you must be in the same folder so cd workspace bird sentiment and see what I have in this folder I have the app.yaml I have the docker file uh, app.yaml I have the docker file and that that's all I need I, I don't need anything else I mean I do need uh, everything else here so but uh, these are the most important files which are required so now I will do G cloud app deploy and it's going to deploy my application so now it's telling me okay descriptor is this one source is this one this is my target project so this is the project ID target version which is just the date and time of today and it's going to deploy it at this URL do I want to continue of course and now we wait for some time uh, so it's going to build the docker container so th the same way that we build on uh, our machine <coughs> uh, our local machine and uh, then it's going to deploy it so it takes a little bit of time so let's wait for it so this this takes a little bit of time to build so in the meantime, let's go and take a look at the melanoma classification model and uh, try to modify it so that we are able to deploy that too. So um, let me open melanoma classification model. So here we already have everything. We have the model.bin file. We have the Docker file. We have the API. So one thing I would like to mention that I won't use uh, just Flask to deploy on uh, uh, in production. So I would rather use Unicorn or UVicorn. So some kind of Python uh, whiskey server. So um, yeah, because and that's much more stable, and it will restart your code. Uh, if it fails so I go to port 8080 debug to false so this is like the change that uh, we made for uh, the BERT sentiment model and we are doing the same so here we have we have a simple model a baseline model the predict function so we take an image and we predict it so if you haven't seen this video just go and watch it I, I, I think it's quite good and we create a uh, application using Flask and Jinja2. And then uh, we have the Docker file. So we define our working directory and everything. And uh, here we will 
define expose the port 8080 and we will also uh, have an entry point so the entry point in this one is quite simple so we we get ubuntu 1804 uh, we install python 3 in it we add a new user called abhishek um, we change the owner of the directory we create a new uh, we copy all the content to uh, home abhishek app and we change the user we then we run the command to install everything we are using pip3 because we are not changing the um uh, python version so ubuntu 1804 uh, whatever python comes with it we are using that 3.6 and then we run python 3 app.py or was it api.py api.py and it's uh, so it has given me some kind of error uh, VM scaling VM based automatic scaling should not have the following parameters uh, okay VM based automatic scaling should not have the following parameters okay um, so let me see what's going wrong there so while searching for why uh, for this error I came across this uh, stack overflow question which is the same and here there is an answer sorry that's a documentation bug we are fixing it so it was in 2016 so they are still fixing it but it says that uh, you don't need any kind of config for auto scaling it should just work so what we are going to do is uh, we are going to remove auto scaling so auto automatic scaling just works so let's just remove this and we speci do specify the resources and everything and we run this again so g cloud app deploy okay so now this is running and uh, in the meantime i will start a new terminal and now i'm in the melanoma deep learning and here i will do docker build minus f docker file so here we built everything uh, for cpu uh, so we don't need to change anything i think let let's just check so we have the api.py which is cpu upload folder is in the docker static folder <laughs> so that is also fine where is model.bin coming from so model.bin is coming from the same uh, directory which is also good so we don't need to change anything at all uh, except for the port uh, docker file minus t so this i will call melanoma dev and dot and let it build this docker file and we can keep checking our deployment okay so this is good that we saw it so now it's uh, it will transfer all the files it will build the whole docker container so this step does take some time so you must be aware of it then that's why your docker file should be small and uh, it should not have a lot of uh, things there you can probably also download the model from somewhere else instead of uploading it from here okay so now we wait for some more time and see what happens next so uh, it finished and we were able to deploy it not successfully though <laughs> so it says that vm disk is full so we will just to be on safe side I will change the disk size to 25 GB. I don't know why it's full. It shouldn't be for 10 GB, but if it is, let's modify it and let's use more RAM too. And we will, no, we don't build it, but we do G cloud app deploy. So this is still our BERT sentiment model. And let's see what happens next.
we again need to wait for some time and in the meantime uh, we have our melanoma dev uh, successfully tagged so one more change that I did because the melanoma model was a little bit old so a change that I made there was I uh, ran uh, I added this command pip3 install upgrade pip otherwise it's going to fail so this is working fine and now we also have the melanoma deep learning model so let's try to run it locally and see if that is still working so we will use the same uh, docker run command minus p at at to at at minus ti melanoma dev and dot and let's hope it works no it doesn't work so it's giving me some error in pre-trained model okay let's see what this error is I haven't seen this error before yeah, this seems like it's due to some mismatch in version so l let me just change the requirements and uh, make torch the newest one and that will fix our problem that should fix our problem so before that we need to uh, build it again so let's let's build it and again wait for some more time so our melanoma docker container is built so now we can just run the same run command again minus p a t a t t i melanoma dev dot and let's see what happens okay so now it's running so let's open this link a new tab and here we have our application which is quite good now let's browse and i uploaded one image from my desktop folder uh, which you cannot, cannot see but you will be able to see the image when i click on predict so let's click on predict so here is the image and we have some prediction and it's working on my local machine right now so let's go back stop it and copy the uh, bird sentiment app.yaml here okay so we got our app.yaml here okay so now uh, we will keep the resources same but uh, we will add uh, something um, else and that's manual scaling so this is what you can do to save money instances one so I need only one instance everything else remains the same it's custom environment because I have a good docker file uh, and same kind of resources and environment flex but if we deploy it like this it's going to overwrite our existing default application which is our bird sentiment application so i'm going to add service melanoma so now it's going to be a new application on the same app engine and g cloud app deploy let's see what it says now okay so now you see it will be deployed to a different address and everything else looks the same let's go and see what happens so now yeah it will take time and this is also running so this is in the last step i hope it doesn't fail now so it's updating the service and this one is yeah it's fetching everything so yeah let's see so you can also see the logs in cloud console so if if you if i just copy this uh, and open in a new tab i will be able to see the logs here as it is deployed which is quite cool so yeah here you can see uh the logs here coming here so yeah it's still loading 
So you can see how much time it's taking and execution details you can see. And uh, let, let me let me see. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So this is your build logs. I, I don't know why I cannot. Uh, okay, here. So what what is it doing? So it's actually running the Docker container right now and installing stuff. Okay, so let it build and uh, let's wait till one of them is done so that I can show you something. So um, yeah, this is pushing it and this one is still installing some stuff. So yeah, let's see. Let's see what happens next. So the melanoma one is done. Uh, it's on this URL. So deployed service melanoma to this. And let's see the other one. The bird sentiment one is also done. This is the default service that we have and it's on this URL. So let me copy this URL and uh, copy and let's do curl request. So this was our previous curl request, right? And instead of uh, the local host, we will be now pasting this URL. And okay, so this is the URL I added HTTP twice. So we don't need that, okay. And let's see, okay, we do have a response. Awesome, how awesome it is. Now, my one of my application here is in cloud. Let's check out the second one and see if that one is working. So, it is on this URL. So, let's open it in a new tab. And here it is. It's uh, in cloud and let's upload an image and click on product. Okay, waiting, waiting, waiting. And here, here we have it. So both our applications are now in the cloud. Just kidding. So both our applications are now in cloud and um, this application, the melanoma application uh, is um, on manual scaling. So it doesn't scale. Uh, but the other application will scale on its own whenever required. So you just need to take care of a few things. Otherwise you will end up spending a lot of money. And we can also go to, we can also go to our app engine. So uh, the console and here you can see uh, now we have some requests per second, uh, like, uh, for different times so we go to the app engine and i will show you one more thing so uh yeah like this is the default application i have uh so this this is the url and uh here you can also define some firewall rules if you want if you go to settings and here you have custom domain so custom domain you can associate a custom domain um to your default application and that's pretty cool so you will be you will be building a whole website on app engine uh, it's pretty nice it's pretty cool and it's pretty easy as long as you know docker everything is easy and that's it uh for today's video did, did we make mistakes yes we did because yeah we made mistakes but we learned from the mistakes and we deployed our application on google cloud platform uh and uh you now you know like uh, why i have been focusing on docker so much because once you know docker all these things become much easier and uh, if you're interested i can also make an application a monolith application where i can show you how to write the front end in React and use Python as backend. But that's another story. And probably we will also do the same for these on uh, Kubernetes in future videos. So stay tuned, like and subscribe and do share the video if you like it. And uh, 
uh, let me know uh, if you have any comments let me know in the comment section if you want me to create uh, some different tutorials let me know in the comments and see you next time goodbye